Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Sareem Akhtar Malik, your host at the Observation Post channel. On this channel, I discuss issues of national and international importance, defense matters, as well as important events from military history. You can interact with me on my channel by giving your views and comments, and you can also connect with me on Twitter at my address, which is at Salim Akhtar 53. Your views and comments are important to me because these help me in fine tuning my talks, which I deliver to you from time to time on this channel. In this session, the topic is, can Pakistan and Turkey intervene militarily on behalf of Palestinians? The background is known to you some days ago, that is not more than two weeks ago, there were clashes between the Palestinians and Israelis, where Israelis, as they do routinely, they stopped Palestinians from praying inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, thereafter, there were protests by the Palestinians and these protests expanded into the suburbs of East Jerusalem, which is under Israeli occupation since 1967. The Israelis following their long-term policy of evicting the Palestinians from the territories which they occupied in 1967, that is the West Bank of River Jordan, East Jerusalem, from these territories, they want to evict the Palestinians by forcing them out of their houses and uh, confiscating their lands, thereby forcing them to leave the country, that is, leave Palestine, or get settled in a small territory which is called the Gaza Strip. Now Gaza Strip is a small strip of land, almost 365 square kilometers in size. That is 141 square miles into which 2 million Palestinians have been boxed by the Israelis. Now, these areas, as I said, were occupied by Israel during the 1967 war. And uh, then thereafter, the long-term Israeli policy has been to force the Palestinians out of these areas. They had already, soon after the war, annexed East Jerusalem and said that Jerusalem was thereafter a united city and it was the eternal capital of Israel, not negotiable. So as a result of the Oslo Agreement, which was uh, done in 1994, a so-called a Palestinian National Authority came into existence, which was granted as due to the pressure put in by the United Nations as well as other outside power. The Israelis granted limited self-rule to some areas in the West Bank of River Jordan, and they likewise gave self-rule to the Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip. Now, Palestinian National Authority is a non-state. That is, it is an authority which has no 
attributes or powers of a normal state it does not have jurisdiction over its airspace and also it does not have jurisdiction over its territorial sea waters so for the last half a century the israelis as i said are working on a plan to force palestinians out of uh, palestine to force them to get settled in neighboring arab countries or get squeezed into the small territory that is the gaza strip israelis say that there is space only for one state between the sea and the river by which they mean the mediterranean sea and the river jordan so some time back as i said there were clashes between the israelis and palestinian worshippers in the alaksa mosque and uh, these were further compounded when the israelis announced their plan to build a new jewish settlement at Sheikh Jarrah now Sheikh Jarrah is a suburb of East Jerusalem and this is not the first time that the israelis have constructed a jewish settlement since 1967 they have constructed hundreds of jewish settlements on arab land that is on palestinian land so they wanted to evict the Palestinian inhabitants of Sheikh Jarrah and build a Jewish settlement there the Palestinians protested and these protested flared up they these protests flared up and resulted in large scale casualties where the Palestinians suffered as usual more casualties than the Israelis there is a proxy iranian militant organization hamas which is based in south lebanon and which keeps firing rockets from south lebanon into israel and the palestinians living in israel uh, in uh, the gaza strip also frequently or occasionally keep firing rockets from gaza strip into israel proper these rockets are rockets in name these are an apology to the word rocket basically these are made from steel pipes or iron pipes filled with a mixture of sugar and chemical fertilizer which is sealed on both the ends and then fired like a piece of fireworks so till now only 10 israelis have been killed as a result of the firing of uh, rockets from south, south lebanon and from the gaza strip but this has given ex- an excuse to the israelis that they have to defend themselves against the provocations from uh, hamas as well as the palestinians living inside the gaza strip so they are heavily bombing gaza strip and till now more than 200 palestinians have been killed including 61 children and this will continue because the americans and the european union countries are firmly behind israel and they say they also say that israel has the right to defend itself now in such a situation there have been protests in pakistan like elsewhere in the muslim countries and in these protests there are demands that pakistan should take a military action there are some cosmetic measures also initiated by the politicians the clerics and the media in which they 
protest on the social media, hold rallies, announce that they will be observe, uh, they will be observing uh, a Palestine day to sympathize with the Palestinians, etc., etc. But these are all cosmetic measures. So they are urging upon the government to send its army to Palestine. These are how serious they are, we don't know. But these slogans and these demands are there. Let us analyze the prospects of a military solution or a military action to be taken by the two most powerful Muslim countries, that is Pakistan and Turkey against Israel. Now, when in 1991, the Americans invaded Iraq because Saddam Hussein had captured Kuwait, the United States before launching its invasion, the, the large scale invasion of Iraq, though even then the Americans that is the even then the United States was a hyperpower. They first used Saudi Arabia as a marshalling area for assembling their forces, and they side by side cobbled together a coalition of 35 countries which would participate in the military invasion of Iraq. They also forced the United Nations to impose sanctions on Iraq, thereby completely isolating Saddam Hussein. Thereafter, they launched their operation and they destroyed the Iraqi army and uh, captured Iraq. Now, in case Pakistan and Turkey, the two most powerful military countries, or Muslim countries, if they decide to launch a military operation against Israel, they will also have to ferry their forces all the way to a marshalling area because both these countries do not have common borders, common land borders with Israel. So they will have to marshal their forces in a marshalling area, which would be in one of the neighboring countries of Israel. So the countries which neighbor on Israel are Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan. Then there are countries nearby, which are not, which do not have common borders with Israel, but they are close by. And these are Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states as well as Iraq. Will any of these countries allow Pakistan or Turkey to assemble their forces for an invasion, for an impending invasion of Israel? It is not possible. Then Israel is a nuclear power, which means that the conventional war, if at all it is launched, Firstly, there will be no marshalling area available for these, for the armies of these two countries, that is Pakistan and Turkey, to assemble their forces. Secondly, even if they get the marshalling areas, Israel is not like Saddam Hussein's Iraq. It is a much more powerful country. It is an undeclared nuclear war. And the war with Israel can flare up into a nuclear conflagration, which may destroy all the countries in the region. It will have far-reaching consequences. I'm not trying to scare you out of a war. The militaries are organized and prepared to fight wars and they are not afraid of bloodshed. But then you should take into account the consequences and the possibility if 
a military action or a military operation is available is possible or feasible or otherwise so in case pakistan and turkey want to launch a military operation firstly they'll not get a uh, an area to assemble their forces then israel is a much more powerful country it can bomb the countries attacking it solely and destroy them solely by its air power it has got the latest f35 stealth bombers as well as hundreds of f16s etc again i am not trying to scare you but then israel is not saddam hussein's iraq i i am telling you repeatedly it can also employ electromagnetic pulse weapons to cripple the target countries that is the countries which which with which it will be in confrontation it will cripple the national networks of electricity telecommunications and transport nodes thereby rendering the the, the target countries without any central authority the central authority in the target countries will collapse and in the recent past israel has done this by employing electromagnetic pulse weapons and cyber technology to destroy iran's nuclear facility at natanz which was used for uh, enrichment of uranium so thousands of centrifuges were destroyed without any physical attack on that facility so this option is available with israel now we talk about iran uh, correction about pakistan and turkey though these countries have powerful armies and they are also producing platforms military pa- uh, pa- platforms like uh, tanks aircraft and submarines ships etc but then both these countries are de- are de- are not independent in their in defense endeavors they are dependent upon foreign expertise technology as well as spare parts for their weapons platforms for example pakistan makes f16 uh, correction f17 fighter aircraft submarines as well as ships and tanks but it is dependent upon china and other countries for the systems which go into these weapons platforms likewise turkey is not wholly de- independent in making its weapons platforms for example pakistan wanted helicopter gunships from turkey but since america has um, laid an embargo on export of military technology and military equipment to pakistan so turkey cannot export its helicopter gunships to pakistan because these helicopter gunships are powered by american engines so this is the extent of our dependence on western technology so what is the way forward the way forward is to systematically develop our national power which includes military power economic power as well as expertise in science and technology and it will take almost two decades to become de- independent of foreign assistance in producing our own weapon systems and on foreign loans so foreign loans which we require to run our economy so this is a logical solution 
till then we'll have to suffice with uh, carrying out pro protests using the OIC, which is a useless organization for launching our protests and for observing uh, Palestine days to show our solidarity, to express our solidarity with the Palestinians. This is all I want to I wanted to say in this session. See you in the next session with a new topic. Till then, bye bye.